Only 1,900 Kosovo fans are here in Southampton, but those fans will make themselves heard as this fiercely proud nation are preparing for the highest profile match in their short history. Gabriel Clark tells the remarkable story of Europe's newest team. Kosovo are on their way. Never before has Europe's newest football nation boasted its best record. Hello. Kosovo are genuine contenders to qualify for their first ever European Championship. It's a story built on a unique mix of talent and brotherhood. Things what the people have suffered there and I think nobody ever has imagined that they can see Kosovo uh, playing on TV. The people, they are proud of this. I think uh, it's very, how you say that, very exceptional. <laughs> You're talking about a team that has come together, you know, very quickly. Football is the one thing that unites everybody. Brian Dean played for England and scored the first ever Premier League goal. He's now part of the new frontier in Kosovan football, consulting at a club in their first domestic league. If you look at where they were, say, three, four years ago, they've come in since then and they've done fantastically well. A state in the former Yugoslavia, Kosovo was occupied by Serbian forces in 1989, triggering one of the most brutal conflicts since the Second World War. Thousands were killed and more than a million displaced. What is happening in the killing fields of Kosovo is unforgivable. Ati Nui was born in the Kosovan capital, Pristina, before his family were forced to leave. I was at that time a very little, little boy, but you understand when it's war that it's not something nice, you know. To get hold of our family there was not always easy. Some of the stories of the cruelty and barbarity practiced by Serb militia are evil beyond belief. Serbian leader Slobodan Milosevic would be charged with genocide after NATO forces liberated Kosovo. It was around 2000 you were able to go back again. You see, for example, burnt houses. There you see that there's been a bit of damage <laughs> done there, but most importantly was then that the country got his freedom and uh, the war was over. Football was a symbol of resistance against Serbia. It was made very difficult for them to actually play games. The football pitches were bombed and destroyed and I think this was all part of trying to break the spirit. That is day of my life. In 2008, Kosovo declared independence. In 2016, they played their first competitive international, offering a new generation the chance to represent the country their parents were forced to leave. The result has been even more potent than anyone expected. Just to play for Kosovo is not just to play for any national team. Is there something more than honor? I don't know, but there is that, that little extra that gives you all the time that you put that shirt on. Since the integration, you've had a lot of players register an interest to go back and play for the country. There's an overwhelming sense of patriotism. We have players that play in very, very good clubs around Europe. Lazio Rome, Werder Bremen, Fenerbahce. Don't forget the others who are not playing for Kosovo. <laughs> Shakiri or Jaka, they are also originally from Kosovo. Football, the symbol of resistance, is now Kosovo's most successful export. Its role in a new nation's progress cannot be underestimated, and they're determined to embrace their biggest stage yet. Okay, we are Kosovo, and we are here against the best team in the world. Can you shock England? I think we can surprise, say that way. As good as England is, you can still hurt them. England is their second team. Everybody over there will be talking about this game. Everybody will be watching this game. Well, maybe you'll be back in England at Euro 2020. Oh, 
Yeah, if, if it's there to sign, I'll sign it. <laughs> Just to be even challenging for it, I think it's already a big statement. But uh, now it's there and uh, we want to grab that chance, you know.